uh, into the word of the Lord this morning. God's been with us all week. Somebody say amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, even to the end of the earth. I want you to turn to the book of Matthew as you grab your Bibles. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for my salvation. Thank, I thank God every day for saving me, for rescuing me. Uh, I even thank him for coming back to rescue me over and over. Amen. I said, I see just like you did the disciples, you came back for them over and over and over again because they didn't get it. They went right back to doing what they used to do. Anybody in this place like that? Amen. That's how I was. But thanks be to God, Jesus came back for me. He came back for me. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, amen, verse 25 and uh, 27. 25 through 27, and uh, then we're going to jump down to 33. But I also want you to uh, put your finger in the book of Philippians, amen. So grab Matthew and then go over to Philippians chapter 4. Put your finger there. Let me know when you got those fingers in those two places. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and begin reading. And the word of God says in Matthew chapter 6, 25, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food. And the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Verse 27 says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour unto your life? Amen. And then it goes on down to verse uh, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of uh, and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then in Philippians, turn over there real quick. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything. Tell your neighbor, calm down a little bit. Just calm on down. Ask God for peace. Do not, don't be anxious, amen, for about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you again tonight. God, I'm asking that you would come and remove me, crush nervousness. I pray for the calmness, the same peace that Jesus spoke to the waves and the, and the wind. When he came into the room with the disciples, they were all shook up and nervous because they had crucified you. And he said, peace be unto you. God, let that peace come in this place. God, touch hearts and minds. God, open up eyes and ears so we can hear the salvation of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. God, I give you all praise, honor, and glory in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody in the house shouted amen. Come on, give God some praise right there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You guys can go ahead and be seated right there where you are. Amen. And uh, again, we want to thank all of you on Facebook and YouTube that tuned in tonight. God's going to come and, and, and be there with you in the supernatural. Amen. He's right there with you right now. As a matter of fact, some of you may be at work. Some may be at home because you can't make it out. But I, I'm praying by faith that you're going to come and, and join us in the sanctuary. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to continue to meet together no matter what. Somebody say no matter what. That's what this thing is all about, amen. We need to have that no matter what attitude, amen, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the work of the ministry, amen. And when we were reading in, in the book of Matthew, you know, one of my favorite parts of that scripture is where it talks about Solomon's robe. And he talks about how he uh, dresses the lilies of the field. 
And he says, Solomon's robe ain't got nothing on these lilies. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. So I, I want you to know about this, uh, this situation, amen. We're in, a, we're in a situation right now where God is on the move, amen, because God knows what we're facing. He knows what we're up against, amen. We're in a trying time. We're in difficult times, amen. We're trying to come out of the pandemic. Hello, somebody, right? We know that there's a war going on, amen, uh, on the other side of the world, but people are really concerned about what's happening right now today, but that's why God sent Jesus. Somebody say amen. Uh, it's not a secret, amen, to the believer, but that's why God sent Jesus, amen. Every opportunity is an opportunity. Oh, you missed that one, huh? Every opportunity is an opportunity to bring somebody a little closer to Jesus, right? So God allows things and causes things to take place, amen, to bring us all a little closer, amen. And he just might use you and I to bring them closer. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, I'm going to read that real quick. It says, therefore, Victory Outreach, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It says, so we fix our eyes. Say, I'm getting fixed up. I'm getting fixed up. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you, God is fixing some of you up. Amen. He fixing me up. Amen. He fixed me up. Amen. Why wave at me if you understand what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm telling you that God is a fixer. Amen. He heals the brokenhearted. He, he delivers drug addicts and alcoholics and prostitutes. Hello, somebody. He breaks shackles and yokes off of the lives of people. He's a deliverer. Amen. He's a, he's a chain breaker. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Amen. He's the one that's able to do it. But you got to believe that he can do it. And then you got to stay with him. Amen. Why he's fixing you. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. He'll fix you up with a boo. Ooh, I knew that. You knew that was coming, huh? See, that's what happens, amen. When you do things right, he fixes everything. Oh, you missed it. You should have just blew up right there. Oh, praise the Lord. All the girls are, and everybody in the house say, oh, you know, you should have been screaming, amen. He fixes everything. So, so it says, verse, verse 18, back to the scripture. So we fix our eyes. Not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. See, I, I'm here to tell you, see, we need to be fixing our eyes on reaching hurting and lost individuals and their families. We need to be fixed, amen, uh, 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 on, on seeing, amen, our KCK campus blow up, uh, restoring broken people, seeing drug addicts and alcoholics, prostitutes, amen, being restored in our men's home and our women's home locations in Kansas and Missouri. We need to be seeing uh, new victory homes opened up, new leadership rising up in KCK, carrying this vision, casting this vision, amen, back upon their families and their loved ones. I hope, I hope somebody is listening to me. We need to see these things, amen. We need to see Pastor Aaron and Sister Shauna and their family and the team taking STL. Yeah, they got an ATL. We're going to have an STL too. Somebody say praise the Lord. We're getting ready to rise up in STL. We're going to take that place by storm. We should be seeing hurting men and hurting women filling the victory home there in STL, being trained and developed to eternalize and cast this wonderful, life-fulfilling vision. We see more young adults, high schoolers, middle schoolers catching this vision, rising up, making big time impacts locally, regionally, and globally. I'm here to tell you, I know Victory Outreach, the Midwest, amen, has got a requirement that's got to be filled to impact the world globally. Somebody's going to other countries. Somebody's going to another city on the other side of the world. Somebody say, praise the Lord. So you got to have this thing called vision to understand what I'm talking about. Let me give you a title for this message because a lot of reasons that we're not excited about this vision 
is, amen, is because we worry. So the title of this message is, Not Worried, But Fixed. Not Worried, But Fixed. Praise the Lord. We're not, we're not, it's not time to be worried. Amen. It's time to be fixed upon this vision. Let's see if they got a title up there. Amen. There we go. Not worried, but fixed on the vision. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our pastor has been talking to us about the vision, about the Macedonian people, the man, and, and how Paul, amen, heard the call, amen, of the Macedonian man. I'm, I'm, tra- I'm talking to some people tonight that should be hearing the call in KCK, hearing the call in STL. Do you hear the call? Somebody say, I hear the call. Do you want to hear the call? You got to ask God, Lord, help me hear the call. He's looking for somebody that wants to hear the call. He's looking for some men and women that said, I'll go. Just let me hear them. So we got to be able to hear these cries, hear these lost and, and hurting people, amen, throughout the Midwest. Paul was telling the Corinthians, don't lose heart. But he's, he's saying, what, don't let fatigue, don't let criticism, don't let pain, don't let worry force you off your square. Don't let these things force you out of your ministry. Don't let these things force you out the victory home. Hello, somebody. Don't let these things run you away from the vision that God is trying to plant in your heart. See, many of you don't see anything happening in KCK because you're looking in the wrong place. Oh, hallelujah. You're looking in the wrong place. Ain't nothing happening over there. People ain't coming in. Ain't nothing going on. But I'm here to tell you, I'm connected to the rock eternal. And he's got a plan. He he works things out. He, He causes things to take place. I'm just an instrument. I'm just a vessel. When he say move, I move. I'm here to tell you, the man at the gate called Beautiful, he didn't know it was his day. He was out there getting this thing on. He, he was hustling. Hey, brother, uh, I was just wondering. I was just, wa- I, I was just wondering if he could loan me about 10 or 20. Uh, but Paul and John, the Bible says that they said, look closely. They said, let me get your attention And they begin to pray and lay hands on him. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came, amen, that came upon this man. He jumped to his feet. They helped him up, amen. They they helped him up. And he came up on his feet, and he began to dance and shout. And the Bible said he praised his way on into the house of the Lord right there at Victory Outreach. Hello, somebody. Come on. We got to have fun with it, amen. We got to have fun with it. So I, I'm saying that you're looking in the wrong place. See, see, many of us have our own clock set because we think we're better than the Israelites. I hope you caught that. We think that we're, we got it all together. We're polished up. Hello, somebody. But I'm here to tell you we're on the same playing field that the Israelites was on, right? And God is taking us in the wilderness and bringing us out just like he did them. I hope you hear what I'm saying. God knows what he's doing in Philippians, amen. And so back to my point. See, we can't be looking at the scene. We can't be looking at the temporary, right? We got to look at the unseen. When we look at KCK, we got to look into the unseen. Hello, somebody. When we look at St. Louis, we got to look at the unseen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, it says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward, pressing toward what is ahead. He says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So he's pressing on to this vision, pressing on with this vision in his mind, pressing on with this vision in his heart. Casting this vision, talking about this vision, talking about the benefits of the vision. Hello, somebody. Did you know that the the vision contains benefits? 
So you can think you got medical benefits and dental benefits. Hello, somebody. You got eyeglass benefits. Uh, some of us got uh, food stamp benefits. Hello, somebody. They got a lot of different benefits, but I'm here to tell you that there's some benefits in the vision that you need to be concerned about. See, there, there's the, the, vis the vision gives me purpose and direction. It gives me instruction. Hello, somebody. It adds value to my life. I'm not just ordinary anymore. I'm extraordinary. You know, you hear somebody, you see somebody, you say, oh, he is so extra. Oh, he didn't care. Yeah, I'm extra because Jesus wanted me this way. Hello, somebody. I was extra when I was in the world, so why am I going to be any different now that I'm in the house of the Lord? We're trying to get things done. He said, fan the flame. That's how you're going to get it done. You got to fan the flame. You got to walk upright and be on fire. He said, if you're on fire, when you pass by somebody else, they might catch on fire too. Hello, somebody. You just walk this thing the right way and watch what the power of God does. So it adds value to my life. It helps mold and shape my character. The vision helps me stay focused on my purpose for living. See, the only way, the only reason I'm alive, God saved me because he had a plan and a purpose for my life. I want you to go over there. I want you to go back to that pond that I pulled you up out of. Hello, somebody. I want you to pull me up a purple one and a pink one and a black one and a blue one. I want every assorted color. I want you to bring them to the house of the Lord, and I'm going to pour my spirit on them. I'm going to give them a new heart. I'm going to give them a new mind. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. That's what you're looking at right now. Somebody came to the pond and pulled me out. They came back to the place where they came from and they pulled me out because they had this vision. They had this vision. The vision helps me stay focused on my purpose for living. The vision gives me responsibility. I didn't have any responsibility. I didn't want responsibility. I couldn't even take care of being a responsible person. Hello, somebody. But the vision has taught me how to be a responsible man, how to take care of my family. Hello, somebody. How to manage my money. How to, how to, how to have a budget, right? How to uh, 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 be nice to people, right? So, so I'm attractive to people and not, not uh, repelling the people. Hello, somebody. The vision does all these things. All of these things are inside the vision. The vision gives promise to my children and their children's children. I could go on and on and on about the benefits of the vision. But I'm going to keep it moving because we got to get, we got to pray. We got to get some prayer time in. I'm going to give you a couple of points, amen, that help us stay connected to the vision. A couple of things that help us uh, stay connected to the vision. First of all, God increases our faith. And he gives us his power to stay connected to the vision. He strengthens us to stay connected. The Bible says, amen, apart from God, I'm nothing. But with him in Christ, what? I can do all things. The first thing I got to learn how to do is do the basic things. God gives me power to do everything that he wants me to do. It's not that he's going to give me power over here. He's not going to give me old power over here. See, this thing, is a, it's a lifestyle power. God gives me power to get up out of my bed. Some of you heard Brother Larry talking about the other day. First thing, he gives me power to get on my knees. Now, I'm not going to do it right now. But he gives me power to get on my knees. He gives me power to roll out the bed on my knees. So you guys know my story. Because I don't trust myself. Hello, somebody. I'm like, the, I'm like the fish. The fish, they swimming along, minding their own business. They're having a good day, 70 degrees, not a cloud on the horizon, slight breeze blowing it from the west, and bloop. There I go. That's the bait I was after, right? Y'all got it. That's all it takes. But God gives me power, amen, to keep it moving, right? Get on my knees to make sure what I'm plugged in. I'm going to the bank in the morning. Hello, I'm making a deposit. But, hey, amen, he's giving me a deposit. Whoa, he's giving, I'm making a deposit, and he's giving me a deposit back. All of these things are in the vision. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. It says, for this reason, right, for this very reason, 
Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11, being strengthened with all power. Somebody shout, all power. Being strengthened with all power. All power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. You got to catch that last line. He's strengthening us with power so we can endure. And we can do it with patience. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord. He's strengthening us so we can what? Stay in the race. He's strengthening us so we can stay in the race even though we got a limp. I got a limp, but I'm still in the race. Brother Lonnie's on the cane, but he's still in the race. He's still in the race. He ain't staying home watching it on YouTube and Facebook. He's here in the race because he got the vision in his heart. See, the vision won't let you stay home. The vision ain't going to let you watch this service and, and stay home. See, God has given each one of us a gift. And when you come, I tell people this all the time in our life group. When you come, you, your gift is not for you. So when you come, right, you bring your gift to the people in the church that need your gift. But when you don't come, they don't get your gift. That's why it's important that you got this vision so you can, what, have power, so you can come. You can have patience and endurance. You can push through every single situation, every circumstance, and you're going to show up at the church. Because you know that God has given you a responsibility and he's given you a gift and it don't belong to you. And it's your job, it's my job to dis display this, this gift, to hand this gift off to people that are in need of this gift. But if I don't have this vision, I can't see that. I can't see the need. Victory home. God is pouring out his spirit on you. He's going to fill you. He's going to do incredible things in your life, but you got to let him do it. You got to be patient. He's giving you patience and endurance, not just little patience. He said great, great endurance and great patience. See, Paul prays, he prays that, that we will not only be filled with knowledge and power of God, but we, will, uh, we all will put our belief in the practice, reaching and helping others get connected to this vision. That's what Paul's praying about. That's what that prayer is about. See, instead of worrying, Paul gives us all targets to pray about, right? We pray, we, we're worried. Well, how are we going to do that? We don't have enough people to do that. And how are we going to be over there in case he can? How are we going to be? you worried about stuff that's outside the scope of your, of your understanding. That's why uh, I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Habakkuk was worried about the wrong thing. He was complaining to God about, you know, why is this like this and why is that like that? And the Lord spoke to him. He said, dude, you tripping. You worried about the wrong thing. He said, get this vision. Write down this vision. He said, make it plain. Hello, somebody. He said, make it plain. Make it so a, a five-year-old can understand it. Hello, somebody. And he said, now I want you to run with it. After you wrote, after you write it down, I want you to run with it, right? And I want you to cast it, amen. I want you to hand it out uh, along the way when you're running with it. Hello, somebody. These are the things. He, 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 he says, don't be worried. Paul has given us targets, all prayer targets, amen. Well, this is a prayer service. So we have to understand that we, we should be praying for ourselves, right, and our family. But God also wants us to pray for the saints. He says, always pray for the saints. Pray uh, uh, for others that, that uh, 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 so he says, to pray about when praying for others that helps them stay connected to the vision. So when I pray for other people, right, God does something, amen. God hears our prayers, amen. He helps uh, people stay connected to the vision. See, I have to understand, right, God's will. So these are things that we should pray for other people. Understand God's will. Gain spiritual wisdom. Please and honor God. Bear good fruit. Grow in the knowledge of God. Be filled with God's strength. 
have great endurance and patience. Stay full of Christ's joy and give thanks always. These are things that we can pray for other people. You know, people stand around and it's like, oh, I don't know what else to pray for. Yeah, you, that, you gotta, you, you, there's so many things to pray for. You can pray for hours and hours and hours because the Holy Spirit said he's going to help you. He said, I, he said, I'm going to help you. See, see, God knows how fragile we are. He knows how lazy we are. He knows how stubborn we are. He knows how uh, uh, quickly we want to give up. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. He gave us the Holy Spirit. We need help in everything that we do. Everything that we do, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. God also uses various forms of discipline to strengthen and empower his people. He uses different and various forms of discipline to strengthen and empower his people. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. The Bible reads like this. It says, endure hardship as discipline. Somebody say amen. When I'm going through something. Do you ever think, like, when I'm going through something, I'm like, God, what, what's going on? What are, you, what are you teaching me? What are you trying to show me? What, somebody say amen. Are, are you thinking like that? That's how he wants us to think. He says, when you're going through some things, I want you to, to know that I'm, I'm shaping you. I'm molding you. I'm training you. I'm developing you. He says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you're not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, hello, somebody. But we know some of us uh, didn't get whooped like we should have, right? Hello, somebody. That's why I had to go on the victory home. I was, I was just hard-headed. Dwayne, now, don't go over there. and You know, you see what's going on over there. It's a bunch of trouble. Don't go over there. Let them do their thing. All right, moms. Couldn't wait to go get in trouble. Because you know why? I thought I was too smart. I said, oh, no. I'm going to stay there. And when the fire starts, I'm rolling out. I'm stuck in the fire, burning up with them. You know how it go. Let me finish reading. So it says, and everyone undergoes discipline. Then you, he says, and everyone undergoes discipline. Then you are not legitimate. He says, not true sons and daughters at all. Did you, you hear what I just said? He's talking about if you are not disciplined and everyone goes through discipline, then you are not legitimate uh, uh, children. It says, not true sons and daughters at all. Verse 9, moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us. And we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. See, this whole thing, God is shaping us and he's got us doing different things and reaching people and taking cities and planting churches and opening victory homes. But at the same time, he's what? Making us holy. He's transforming our hearts and our minds, right? Because he wants us to be pure, right? He says, if I'm holy, well, then you got to be holy too. You know how it is. You know, hey, me and I'm, I'm somewhere with, with my kids, you know, and they, they act, hey, what you, what you, you are Eason. What you doing? Hello, somebody. You know how you get that. They making you look bad. Hello, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. You have to remind them who they are. That's what God is saying, right? You can't just go and do this, do this work and act like you want to act. You got to what? Have a holy mind. You got to have a purified heart. Somebody say amen. amen. He says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces what? A harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I'm here to tell you, men's home, women's home. You hear me saying women's home. I'm speaking it as it is. Hello, somebody. As if it were. I'm speaking it as, as, as if it were. You're going to encounter some discipline, right? You're going to encounter discipline. 
uh, 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 that's why you must have an encounter with God, the keeper and sustainer. We've got to have an encounter because without an encounter with God, when that discipline comes, pow, you're going, I ain't taking that. Or you, you're going to be fighting back. Be like Jacob wrestling with God. Oh, God, I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. Somebody say praise the Lord. God gives us power and strength to stay united. Here's the next one. Power and strength to stay united. But I'm here to tell you that power and strength to stay united, it comes when we look out for one another. Oh. Let me say it again. You missed it. God gives us power and strength to stay together, to remain united. But this type of uniting, this spiritual uniting comes when we look out for one another. God gave Nehemiah stability and humility and kept them joined, what, together in the spirit of the Lord. I like to just say we're joined at the cross. Everybody in this room, we're joined at the cross. It's going to be up to us to stay what? Our pastor talked to us uh, quite a while ago, a little while ago, about being close to the cross. He said a lot of things don't happen if you stay close to the cross. People that uh, ain't no good from you, they're going to roll on out. If you stay close to the cross, right? Hey Amen. We see Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. It says, meanwhile... Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is given out. And there is much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemies said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, Wherever you turn, they will attack us. Ain't that just like the enemy? That's just like the Crips and the Bloods, right? They never come by themselves. They always come all at one time. They all come to jack you all at one time. They won't come by themselves. They all come at one time, right? That's how the spiritual enemy works in your life. That's how he comes to attack you, right? That's how he comes to what? Pull you away from your ministry. Pull you away from the, the benefits that God has put in your lap. He says, I'll pour out a, a blessing upon you that you can't even contain. Hello, somebody. Right? That, that's how God does it. Amen. But we got to be there to hold on to it. Right? He gives us power to hold on to these things that he's given us. Right? So we have to, we have to work hard. We have to be like the workers there with Nehemiah. He taught them and trained them, right? He pointed out how the enemy works. He pointed out the strategy of the enemy. That's what's happening right here. You're getting trained and developed to watch out for the enemy. God says, guard your heart. He said, trials are coming your way. He said, when trials come, right, count it all joy. See, that's what has to happen in order for us to hold on to this vision and stay connected to this vision. We're going to get hit, right? But I, I'm here to tell you, when, when, when we have this spiritual unity, right, when we look out for one another, there's something that happens in the spirit when we look out for one another. Discipleship is an important factor for looking out for one another. See, we, just like Nehemiah and his team, we've got to remain focused on our vision and our purpose. The enemy works subtly. Amen. You guys know that word, S-U-B-T-L-Y? It's a tongue twister. That means that the enemy will be in your mind. He doesn't he done set up shop. Hello, somebody. He's, he's kicking back. He had already built a room in your mind. You don't even know he's there. You're talking with him, having a conversation. Oh, come on now. Do you understand how the enemy works? He comes to set up shop right there in your midst. You talking about oh, hallelujah, glory to God. And the enemy is setting up shop in your mind. And he does it through what? Bad relationships. And I, when I say relationships, it could be uh, a, a relationship with another person or it could be my relationship with the TV. Hello, somebody. My, my relationship with my, with my phone, my relationship with my computer. But he, he sets up shop. He's so slick and he comes in real smooth. 
I used to think I was smooth like that too, you know what I'm saying? But um, hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. But I, God said, humble yourself, boy. Humble yourself before I humble you. Yes, Lord. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of the Lord. So the enemy works real smooth, amen, uh, 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 to cause us to focus on other issues, other things that, that he's using to cause fear, doubt, division, and failure, right? He's working hard. He's been doing this for millions of years. Somebody say amen. You see right there when you think about Eve, amen, in the garden, right? Before she knew it, she was having a conversation with the devil, she was, she was conversating with him. Are you hearing me? God didn't mean that. Right? You come, well, well he, he, he said this, right? And, and that's how it works. He's still doing the same thing today. We got to be aware of how the, the enemy works of, and his strategy, right? That's why it's so important to pray. It's so important to understand what this vision, the benefits in this vision are going to do for you. He taught, Nehemiah taught and encouraged uh, the workers, amen, uh, how to be flexible and ready to make adjustments according to leadership directions that drive and help us make mega moves that are in front of us. How many of you know we got some mega moves in front of us? Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody should have gave God some praise right there. God is counting on all of us, amen, to help make these mega moves, right? Yeah, so that's why we're talking about acceleration. We're talking about enlarging the place of our tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Hello, somebody. We know God has given us treasures out of darkness, right? Now we just need those treasures, amen, to what? Unfold. We need these treasures to unfold. We need everybody to be together. When people see us together, what? We are attractive. We look good. Other people are attractive to us. They be like, wow, wow, they look good. Dang. Well, they work with, they got Michael Kors on. What that, what's that? No, nah, that's Jesus Christ, brother. <laughs> we look wonderful when we're together. Not kicking and fighting and buckering and, and all that stuff, right? People are going to see the power of God on April the 17th, right in the sanctuary. They're going to see the power of God. They're going to see how well we work together and how God's going to move, amen? So being fixed, amen, being fixed and not worried, but, but connected to the vision will, will enable God's power, his anointing and his strength to come and do what he wants to do in each one of our lives. You know, but there's always sin. Sin is always there. The Bible says wherever good is present, evil, wherever good is, evil is also present. Somebody say amen. So, but we don't have to worry about sin either. We got to pray about it. Come on, give God some praise, right? We, we can pray about it, right? We got to pray about it, right? Because I don't care who you are. You're going to be tempted, right? You're going to be challenged, right, to keep walking and moving forward. You're going to continue. You're going to keep getting uh, 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 challenged, amen, every single day. That's why it's so important for us to understand our responsibility with this vision. See, God gave Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie this vision in 1967. And, and they started Victory Outreach, right? They took it, right? They, they took the responsibility. They, they, they embraced this vision, and they, and they took it to the street. They took it to the neighborhoods, right? We see the, the result. We see the miraculous results today, amen, 55 years later, how this ministry is blown up all over the world by the grace of God because of this wonderful vision that he, yeah, give God some praise, that he gave them 55 years ago. They never turned away from it. They were always able to see great things off in the distance that God was doing. They were always able to see it. They always had hope. I know there were some difficult times. I know there were times where they struggled here and there. But by the, by the grace of God, amen, thanks be to God, amen, they continue to hold on to this vision. My question to you is what are you going to do with the vision? What are you going to do with it? What's, how, what's your responsibility? What's my responsibility with this vision? Are, are you an owner of the vision? You can be owners of the vision. Somebody say amen. Act like you didn't know you could be owners. 
Some of us don't own nothing, but if you own this vision, you're going to own some stuff. Hello, somebody. If you own this vision, amen, you're going to own some things. And for if you're worried about, a lot of people don't come in and, and, and get uh, 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 connected, right? Get fixed in this vision is because of sin. We, we know that sin, it, it causes us to lose focus. It ca- you, 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 it's hard to pay attention when you're struggling with sin at the same time. Hello, somebody. It, it's hard, right? It, so so we, we know that that scripture, right, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, right, says that we, can't, we don't have to worry about sin, but we've got to pray about it. It says, if my people, I want you to stand to your feet, and I want the musicians to come. I want the singers to come. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, as you're standing, it says, if my people, somebody shout, I'm your people, God. Say it louder, I'm your people, God. Say it again, I'm your people, God. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. See, God is telling us, don't allow sin to stop you from being an owner of this vision, to be an operator, to be living in this vision. He's, he's set everything in place. He's, he's established some tools, right? Confession, repentance, forgiveness. He set all of these things in place. He's, he's given us his word. He says the power of God is the word of God. So we have to understand when I speak the word of God, when I pray with the word of God, that's God's power. Somebody, I said, I want that power. I'm here to tell you, I know that the house of God, I know there's some struggles going on. I know that people are finding it difficult, whether it's in your body, whether it's uh, you're just lazy, or whether you're struggling with sin, or whether you, you've got something that you know is not good enough, that's not good for you, but you don't want to let it go. Hello, somebody. I know how that is. I know how that is. I know what it's like being stuck. You ever been in a bad relationship? You knew it was no good for you, but you were stuck. I've been like that. I've been stuck. No, I need to get away from this. Well, I'm here to tell you, God is going to strengthen you tonight. If you want to be strengthened, if you want to, if you want the power of God to come into your heart, he's going to do it tonight. I'm going to open these altars this is a church altar call. So we can, what, take this vision. We can own the vision. We can run with the vision. We can write it down as we're running. We can cast it. We can hand it off to other people. But we need the power of God. We need to be strengthened. God wants to unify us. He wants to do it, but we've got to want God. We have to want all of God. We have to want to be holy before the Lord. We have to say, God, do with me as you please. Even if there's something that we're struggling with, we got to say, God, Lord, I know I shouldn't have this, God. Help me let this thing go. Help me release this thing. And watch, won't God do it? Watch him. The Bible says that love must be sincere. If you ask God in your struggle and you're sincere, I'm here to tell you, He's going to do it. He ain't, he's not going to make you let it go, but he's going to come and approach you. And you're going to know that's God. He's going to create a situation. He says, I'll make rivers in the desert. I'll come for you, says the Lord. If you want me, I'll come for you. I'll set you free, says the Lord. But you've got to want me. Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands right now. Lift up those hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, God. Here we are, God. We're your people, and we're your God. We want to be connected to this vision. We want to be fixed to the vision. 
God, help us tonight. Strengthen us so we can do our part, so we'll be responsible for this vision, so we can go and we can take KCK, we can take STL, we can plant more victory homes, God. We can do everything that you called us to do, God. We can be free from sin. We thank you in Jesus' name. Keep those hands lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, lift up those hands. Talk to the Lord. The presence of God is here. He wants to empower you. He wants to strengthen you because he's given us a great task. He's given us mega moves to make. He's given us a responsibility. And he's included you and I. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Break shackles and yokes. Break shackles and yokes. Open prison doors that the captives can go free. And they can serve the Lord with all their mind, all their heart, and all their soul. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way. Heal your people. We need you spiritual heal, spiritually heal us, God. God's going to do it. Call upon the name of the Lord. He said, when you're in trouble, if you're in trouble, call upon my name, says the Lord, and I'll come and I'll rescue you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Heavenly Father. God, you've given us a great task. God, help us to see. Help us to see all the people coming into our church there in Kansas City, Kansas. God, help us to see the people, the hurting people coming into our campus there in St. Louis, there in STL, God. God, shape and mold the team. Shape and mold men and women that have said yes to the call. Oh, God, you've given us gifts and talents. You've given us skills for this type of work. We're specialists. We're not just ordinary workers, but we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Have your way in this place. Touch your people. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you got to call upon them. Close your eyes. Don't look around. Don't pay attention to nobody else. Focus upon the Lord. He wants to do great and mighty things in your life. Thank you, God. God, I'm asking that you would touch my children. God, as you touch them, bring them securely into the arms of Jesus. God, that they can serve in this ministry. God, touch my children. They belong to the adult ministry. They belong to the gang. Oh God, we thank you. Open up their eyes, open their ears, so they can hear the salvation of the Lord. God, thank you. Thank you for everything you've already done inside my family. You've proven yourself. You've proven yourself inside my family, God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. God, help me to be more verbally influential in the lives of my children. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Continue to cry out to him. He wants to bring an increase. He wants to enlarge your capacity. He wants to strengthen your stakes. He wants to stretch your tent curtains wide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we need you. We need you. Keep talking to him. Have your way in this place, God. God, raise up preachers and teachers God touch Lord touch men and women God open up doors oh God touch your people open up Lord the minds of your people God that we can receive your directions your instructions revelation wisdom knowledge Understand, come on, lift up those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, God, we need you. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. You've given us gifts and talents. You're raising up preachers and teachers, pastors, evangelists, missionaries, prophets to the nations. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm talking to you. Lord, I'm talking to you about your people. If I'm talking about you, I just want you to begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when you start talking to God, he begins to make his way. Oh, hallelujah. Rain upon your people. Open your mouths. Oh, God, we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise your name, oh, God. Oh, my, my, Come on, if you know how to pray with those tongues, pray in the spirit. It's a good time. sha da 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 ba so do do yo yo da da ba ba so a da 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 ba 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 si do do we need your spirit, oh God. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We know that you're a God that does miraculous things, God. I'm praying that you're healing somebody right now. You're touching somebody's mind. They've been battling in their mind. They've been struggling with thoughts. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, God, that you're breaking shackles and yokes. Oh God, you're sending the captives free right now. Hallelujah. Come on, God wants to use you. He wants to use you. He wants you to be free of your struggles. He wants you to be free of those mindsets. Hallelujah. You just got to praise him. When praises go up, breakthroughs come down. When praises go up, the blessings of the Lord come down upon his people. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Let's sing it without the music. Come on, sing that. Everybody, lift up those hands and sing that. No place I'd rather be. Hallelujah. No place I'd rather be. Come on, let's hear the people in the audience. Hear. Come on, lift up those hands. It's a lullaby. It's a lullaby to Jesus. He wants to hear from you right now. Hallelujah. Tell them, tell them. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love. One more time, one more time. Sing with all your heart. No place I'd Hallelujah, hallelujah. No place I'd rather be. Oh, da, da, da. God, you're wonderful, you're mighty, you're marvelous. Hallelujah, you're a healer, you're a deliverer. You set free the captives, you open up prison doors. Hallelujah, you give purpose. Hallelujah, you give instructions, you give everlasting mindsets. Oh, hallelujah. God, we need you. God, help us to guard our minds. Help us to receive the power and the strength that you talked to us about tonight. Help us to be owners of this vision. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, apart from you, we're nothing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah.